In this video, we'll be doing a quick overview of Groovy. Open up the app if you haven't already. And if you've already activated your subscription, you should see a green arrow in the top right. After selecting that, it takes you to the first page of the app named General. Next to most of the titles at the top is the info button. Selecting it brings up the descriptions of some of the functions found on each page. To move between pages, simply select the arrows at the top left and right. We'll see the camera page on the next and the design after, but let's go back to general and go over some of the options here. First, we have the live view. We usually keep this on to see the camera feed later. We also keep the beep sounds on for the countdown and the slow-mo boomerang is an effect you can choose to have on or off. We'll keep it on. A five second record time works well for us to keep the video at a good length after all the slow-mo and effects. The countdown is the amount of time between hitting record, which starts the arm, and the actual start of the record time. You can adjust the time for your camera arm to get up to speed before recording, but three to five seconds is usually good. The sharing time out is the amount of time the sharing screen is active after recording before it clears or times out. 10 seconds seems to work fine, but as with all of these options, you can adjust to your liking. Back up to the video quality, some things to take into consideration is your internet speed to share the videos, the file sizes, and social media compression, or the decreasing the quality of your upload. We usually keep it at HQ. You can also use the network speed test to check out how fast your connection is and adjust accordingly. We'll speed up this evaluation here. And you'll see the download speed, upload speed, and the amount of time it takes to upload a certain file size. The motion trigger starts recording when it detects movement in the arm. We'll leave this off. Moving on to the next screen, we have the camera page. From the top, the first setting you'll see is the option to use the front or back camera or connecting a GoPro. But we'll be using an iPhone for this. We always use the back camera, so make sure that's selected. Next is the exposure setting. You have the option to use auto or manual exposure here. And we like to use auto with continuous focus at 120 frames per second the ultra wide camera and keeping exposure at zero will usually produce a well lit shot and the stabilization on for smoother shots. The next page is the design page. Firstly, you can choose the video resolution. Full HD works great for us, but if you want more quality, you can select 4K. Options one through five indicate the different aspect ratios one being vertical videos commonly found in TikTok, and five being landscape found in most videos on YouTube. We like to use number three, which is the square option for easy cross-platform sharing. Next are more design options. You're able to upload any file or overlays you might want that sit on top of your future recordings. We'll upload one here. If you don't have any ready to use, you can download tons of themes that are preloaded into the app. Build them out using the designer and save your presets. We won't be going into complete detail in this video, but let's quickly download and build a design. We'll go to download a theme, find a suitable category, and scroll through the list here. And we will go with tropical. Select the plus sign when you find one you like. We'll choose this one and it'll load into the designer. We'll speed this process up here. Some resizing and choose different elements from other downloads as well. And we'll save it. And we'll name this tropical. Now you can go to load design presets and see that it's saved in there. and we'll press the right arrow to move on to the effects page. Here we can add a clip in before or after recording with pre-roll video or post-roll video. Selecting those buttons will bring up the option to upload files for that. A brand marketing asset would work well. And we can add a maximum of five effects to the clip itself, adding them by selecting the add effect button. We'll go ahead and add a hyper zoom here. Add another one. Let's do collage and another. We'll go with Honeygrid. 
and you can adjust the timing of the effect by selecting it. Using the sliding bar will change when the effect starts and stops during a clip. It defaults to the whole video, which is 0 to 1, but we'll use this one to use the first half and this one for the second half. We'll change the effect color and press choose when ready. To preview the effects, you can record a clip or import one if you have it. We'll film one real quick here. We'll see the countdown and the record time. It'll take a moment to process the video, but we'll speed this up. Taking a look at the rendered video, we can see the collage effect in the first half of the video. Hyper zoom will come in shortly in the middle. There it is. And the honeycomb in the last half. Once again, those adjustable sliding bars will affect the duration of those effects. And you can share or delete this video. Let's select home to go back to the main page. And we'll find our way back to the effects page, but go on to the next, which is audio. You can upload an audio file by selecting the white box. Here you can search for files on your device. If you do not have any, you can choose from a few included tracks here. And if you select a track, it will play a preview of it. We'll go with track five and go to the next page. For the sharing one page, we usually leave all of these modes of sharing on. We have email, WhatsApp, QR code, general and airdrop. On the bottom, we have some options for WhatsApp, email and general. So this information will be sent with the video. So we'll type in some information here. Little message. And our company name. For the sharing two page, there's the option to select internet free sharing. We won't be going over detailed use of this in this video, but this is used at venues with no internet and allows users to connect by a QR code linked to a local area network. We'll unselect and go to the next page, which is cloud storing. Here you can link a Google Drive or Dropbox account. It'll ask for some permissions if selected. But moving on, we have the Bluetooth page. This is where you will be able to connect your OrcaView unit to Groovy and set the speed and direction of the rotation of the arm. See our video for detailed instructions on that. The next page is TV Mirror, which gives you the option to show a live session that goes through the countdown, live view, and result, and thank you screen, or a slideshow that displays a replay of all the videos individually. When mirroring, the screen will light green. We'll leave this off for now. Moving on to the next page, we have the sharing queue. This will display any videos that are in queue or pending. You will also have the option to clear the queue by selecting this area here and send out anything in queue by selecting the send out queue button. Finally, the last page, we have the record screen. Since we have the live view on, we can select the check live view to see what the format of the video with the overlay looks like. This will give us a few seconds to check what that looks like. And the circular middle button will begin the countdown to record. On the right, there's the gallery button. This holds the recorded videos of the session. When selected, you will see the library of videos, which you can select, review, and share in case somebody missed it. Going back, let's test out the recording. We'll speed up the process here, but we'll see the countdown, record time, and rendering. And after it's finished, once again, you have the option to share or delete the video. Also to preview it, going back to the record screen, the menu button on the left will take you back to the beginning general page if you need to change any other settings. And now you're ready to rock your first event.